you repeat these words after me? Say, it's turning around for good. Come on, say it again. It's turning around for good. Will you reach over and grab somebody? Say, it's turning. It's turning. Come on, reach over and grab somebody. Say, it's turning. Come on, grab. I said, grab somebody. Say, it's turning. It's turning. It's turning around for good. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this is my assignment for the day. And let not these words fall upon deaf ears. Let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church in these last and evil days. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my God. Uh, you are my strength. And you are my Redeemer. And for this I give you praise and glory and is in the name which is above every name. That name is Jesus. And the people said amen and amen. On your way to your seat, just say, it's turning around for good. Say it. It's turning around for good. Can I just have your undivided attention? I'm going to ask you to suspend uh, all distractions and... Um, because it's vitally important that you hear what God is saying today, Jesus. <clears throat> As I forestated about a week ago, I, I heard God clearly uh, speak in my ear as I was sitting on the organ over there. And when he said to tell you that it's turning around, <clears throat> I was in... Excuse me, I was in a defensive driving class on Friday. Uh, you know, you go to those classes for more than one reason. Either you have a DWI or a DUI, or you go there to get your driver's license for the first time, or you go there because you got a speeding ticket. Well, I will tell you, <coughs> it was the latter for me. I had gotten a, a speeding ticket after 25 years of driving. I haven't had a speeding ticket. I was coming out of my subdivision and uh, in a hurry, as I always do, and uh, the police pulled me over. And and I, even though I told him I was a pastor, it didn't make it didn't matter. Even though I told him I was, uh, you know. It didn't matter. He said, sir, I'm still going to give you a ticket. I said, okay. All right. I, 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 I hate I got a ticket. I, I, got a, I, I hate I got a ticket. I wouldn't even tell Kim I got a ticket. But then I got busted because John Isaac was driving on his way to somewhere and saw me pulled over by the police and said, Dad, you okay? So Don, John went back and uh, told on me. I know he did because he told somebody. He told Taz or somebody. He told Taz. He didn't tell his mama. But, but I got busted that I got a ticket over 20, after 25 years. Now, I, I, I will admit this today, I did not want to take the class. I did not. I did not want to take the class because I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. After all, I was the only pastor in the class. And because the instructor and the owner knew I was a pastor, they kept referring to me as pastor in front of all them folks. And I wish they would have said, Pastor got a ticket, but they just said, you know, Pastor. So them folks didn't know if I was driving drunk or what. I don't, they, didn't, they didn't know I was in the class. They just, they just knew I was a pastor in the class. And I was so embarrassed. Jeez, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> Jesus. That's Carla. She quick, boy. Jesus. Oh, my God. And she run track or something, I think. Amen. <laughs> Basketball. She do something. That was, that was quick. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> I was so embarrassed. I was. 
And uh, thank you. Thank you, Carla. Amen. I love her so much. Put your hands together for Carla. So while the instructor was teaching, uh, I got confirmation about today. When she began to explain the yellow road signs and its meaning, this sign, Jesus. And at that moment, I got a download from heaven, and I knew someone needed to hear this revelation to get back in line and, and to get back on track. Because some folks can be out of line. Remember when you was in elementary school, the teacher would tell you, get back in line. And they walking down the hallway, and everybody in line, and you the only one out of line. They would say, hey, get back in line. Anybody had the teacher ever tell you that? Get back in line. Jesus. I need someone to shout, get back in line and get back on track. Come on, look at somebody say, get back in line and get back on track. <laughs> Amen. Get, your, get, get back on track. So now the shape and colors of traffic signs give clues to the... Wow, that's, yeah, so wrong them batteries, amen. Um, <clears throat> uh, the shape and color of traffic signs give clues to the type of information that they provide. The color red means to stop. The color green gives you directions. The color blue directs you to hospitals and gas stations and restaurants. The fluorescent yellow green is for, the, for pedestrians and school warning signs to tell you to slow down. The color white is regulatory that provides information regarding enforceable laws. The color orange is an indication that uh, road work and workers on the road is up ahead. Are you paying attention to what I'm saying? So you got the red, you got the blue, you got the fluorescent yellow, you got the white, and you have the orange. The color brown gives you direction to historical sites, parks, and recreation. Can the church say amen? amen. Um, the fluorescent pink color is for incident management, crash, cleanup, and debris removal. Someone shout fluorescent pink. But the yellow road signs are signs for warning to be cautious and careful as you proceed. The U-turn sign behind me means that the driver is allowed to make a complete turnaround to go in the opposite direction. And so the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles Traffic Signs, is to help you navigate your vehicle while driving with extreme cautions. I need you to look at someone and say, meanwhile, please pay attention. Because we drive and we don't really pay a lot of attention to the signs. Can I get, can I get someone to say amen? Amen. We don't pay attention to them signs. We see them blue signs, brown signs. We don't pay attention. Come on. Can I get a witness? You just so glad you got your driver's license. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Some of y'all took you three times to pass. Amen. So you, you just glad you got your driver's license. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm just glad I got my driver's license. <laughs> I ain't paying no attention to all them signs. I ain't got time to know what that brown sign mean, that, that pink sign. I ain't got time for all that. Jeez, I ain't got time. I just, I'm just glad I got my driver's license. <laughs> God, would you put that next slide up for me? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't mention this sign, did I? Mm-mm. But it's yellow. It is a dead end sign. 
Look, your neighbor said, Pastor, going to work this today. Yeah. It is the dead end sign. The dead end sign alert the driver that the path that they are traveling leads to a dead end. And when a driver comes across a dead end sign, please hear me, they must understand that the street they are on will not connect to another street. In fact, there is no outlet for, for through traffic and the road ahead will not continue. And so, what should you do if you see a dead end sign while driving? What, what should you do? Hear me. You, you should slow down and find a safe place and turn around. Can someone shout, turn around? I need you to look at somebody and say, unknowingly, are you going in the wrong way? Look at somebody and say, neighbor, could you be headed in the wrong direction? And look at somebody else and say, if so, then turn your butt around. Jesus, turn your butt around. That's a, put it, put it back, because put it back. That's a dead end. That's a dead end. That, that street leads to nowhere. There's no connecting street to that street. It's a dead end, Jesus. Now, for the most part, people don't pay attention to warning signs. They, they really don't. Watch this. A sign to turn your life around can be staring you in your face and you will ignore it. I said the warning sign to turn your life around will be staring you in your face and you will ignore it. The sign that your life is headed in the wrong direction can be in your view and you will just bypass it. Drive right by it. The sign that your life is headed for destruction can be in your path and you will circumvent the truth. And perhaps this is why the Bible said pride goeth before destruction and a halted spirit before fall. See, you circumvent the truth because you are too prideful to admit that you are headed in the wrong direction so your life is falling apart. Your life is falling into pieces because you will not admit the truth. You will come to church Sunday after Sunday but you won't admit the truth. You'll sit in that chair, you'll hear me preach, or you'll hear Pastor Demetri preach every Sunday and you won't admit the truth that you're going in the wrong direction. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your pride will destroy you. Some of you are so prideful, you won't admit that you're wrong. That you're too grown to admit that you are wrong. Jesus, you're not always right. You can be wrong going in the wrong direction. Somebody needs to pull your coattail. And the day I came, the pool literally pulled your coattail and tell you you're going in the wrong direction. Somebody open your mouth and say, pull my coattail, pull my coattail, pull my coattail. The Bible says, the Bible says, I'm, I'm running on to close. The Bible says that Jonah was a prophet who God called to preach to the city of Nineveh. Jesus, he was, he was a prophet of God and God called him to go to Nineveh and preach. And Jonah is known in the Bible, hear me, as a turnaround prophet. He became a runaway, and his story is really about his disobedience and God's compassion. It's really about his disobedience. The, the whole Jonah chapter 1, 2, 3, and so on is about his disobedience. In chapter 1, Jonah struggled with I need to versus I don't want to. And we all have a I need to and I don't want to. I need to stop doing this, but I don't want to. I need to leave this alone, but I don't want to. 
I need to leave that alone, but I don't want to. But I don't want to. I need to stop doing this, but I don't want to. I'm, I, 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 I just don't want to. I, I, I know I need to stop, but I don't want to. Have you ever had I don't want to in your spirit and it's destroying your life? I said, have you ever had I don't want to in your spirit? And you know it's killing your influence. I say it's killing your influence, but 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 you got I don't want to. I don't I don't I know I need to, but I want to. God, I know I need to, but I don't want to. And we all have a Nineveh. I said, we all have a Nineveh, Jesus. And, and prior to Nineveh, disobedience, Nineveh was the largest pagan urban center in the world, decorated by gardens and parks and a, and a zoo. It was, it, was, it, it was decorated. It was the largest pagan urban center in the world. Nineveh is what the Department of Motor Vehicle would, would label as a brown sign. It has statues, parks, and recreation. <laughs> it was a brown sign. Are, are you understand what I'm saying? Look at look at neighbors. The neighbor said it was, it was a brown sign. It was a brown sign. So Jonah, the Bible says, packed his bags mm -hmm, and looked for the first opportunity to get as far away from the presence of God and far as far away from his purpose. In fact, Jonah wanted nothing to do with Nineveh. Nothing. So he just packed his bags and tried to do whatever he can to get as far away from the presence of God. Sometimes that's what people do when they know there's a calling on their lives. They do all kind of unnecessary stuff. So hope, hopefully that God would disqualify them, Jesus. But God will wait until you keep doing all that you do. <laughs> He'll wait until you keep running into trouble and running out of trouble, running into a fire, running out of a fire. He'll wait until you do all of that. You can drink, try to drink yourself to death. You can try to smoke yourself to death. You can try to weed yourself to death. You can all you want, but there is still a purpose and a calling on your life. You can all you want, there's still a calling on your life. And you can be run, you can you can run as far as you want to run from the presence of God, but sooner or later, somebody say sooner or later, sooner or later, sooner or later. And in fact, Jonah was so hell bent, he was hell bent, avoiding what God wanted him to do that he would rather drown. And I, some folks, they would rather drown in that mess. They so hell bent on doing what they want to do. Jesus, so and shall hell bent. Amen. So hell bent doing what you want to do that you would rather drown in that. Jesus, Jesus. And Jonah disobeyed God because he was narrow-minded. He runs away from God. And, and as he's running away from God, it's not by accident. <laughs> it's by design God's purpose designed for Jonah, he gets swallowed up by a big old fish. And that was not by accident. That was not by incident. The Bible said God put a big fish in, in, that, in, in that sea. God put that fish there just for Jonah. I guarantee you Jonah had never seen a fish like that. Jonah had never seen a fish like that. He got swallowed up in the belly of a fish. And I don't know how to tell you, but you know when your disobedience is reaping bad consequences. And you end up in a worse situation than before. You know like nobody knows that when you make 
those kinds of decisions and you walk in disobedience that you're reaping bad consequences and, and you end up in a worse situation than before. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but to get your attention, God is about to call something bigger than you to swallow you. Did you hear what I just said? To get your attention. Put that camera on my face. I don't know who I'm talking to on live on the live stream, but God is about to get your attention. He's about to allow, allow something bigger than you to swallow you. Jesus, Jesus. This is an attention getter today. I'm, 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 I'm going to get your attention today because God says he's about to call something, Jesus. It's not even there yet, but when God gets ready for the calls, he's going to put it there, and it's going to be bigger than you ever had to deal with in your life, and it's going to swallow you just to get your attention. I need somebody to repeat these words after me and say, God, uh, if I'm headed in the wrong direction, Please, pretty please, get my attention. Is there anybody want God to get your attention when you're going in the wrong direction? God, whatever you got to do, get my attention. Show me my way. Show me I'm going in the wrong direction. God, I need you to show me I'm headed for destruction. God, I need to show me I'm headed to, towards a dead end. Get my attention. Come on, open your mouth say, God... Please get my attention. So now the Bible says, they said to one another, we need to get to the bottom of this. Somebody on this ship is causing all of this. Have you ever been a, with a whole bunch of folk and you realize something, something went wrong, trying to figure out Somebody caused this. I don't know who it is. S somebody close to me. <laughs> somebody in my circle has caused. I, I don't know because I didn't do it. So, I mean, they on the ship. They're talking to. Get this. I, I need. I need to get you right in the ship. They in the ship. And there's a raging sea, and 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 they in the ship. They trying to figure out who who caused this. Billy, did you cause this? Buddy, did you cause this? They looking at somebody caused this. Some the captain on the ship said, "Now somebody is lying to me. Somebody caused this. Jesus, somebody caused this. We'll get to the bottom of this and watch this." So they said, "Okay, the only way we're going to figure this out, let's draw straws. <laughs> let's draw straws to identify." Who's responsible for this? So they drew straws and Jonah, Jonah got the short straw. Is that amazing? You try to fit in where you don't fit in. And then God allows something to happen to you because you ain't supposed to be there anyway. You end up getting the, getting the short straw. Because you're trying to fit into something that you ain't never supposed to be involved in. But you're trying to fit yourself in. And then God allow you to get the short straw. <laughs> when there is an, an, an anointing on your life. You can't do like everybody else. God ain't going to allow it. God ain't going to allow it. When you know better, you ought to do better. You, you can't be like everybody else. You was, watch this. I'm going to hit somebody right here. You was raised in holiness. And you know holiness is right and somebody's wrong. You was raised in holiness. You get taught holiness every Sunday. And then God going to allow you to stand out like a sore thumb. Like a so Jonah got the short straw. And this is for about seven or eight persons. I don't know who I'm talking to, but since you won't admit you are the cause, get ready for the short straw. Since, 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 <laughs> since you're going to be preoccupied while I'm preaching and you're not paying me no attention, you just get ready for the short straw. 
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready, get ready, get, 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 you better get, get ready for the short, strong. God is about to get your attention. I say, God is about to get your attention. You now understand what I'm saying? I say, God is about to get your attention. Because you're about to get the short end of the stick. And what used to work in your favor, it ain't going to work no more. When you had favor, now you got to be manipulative. I said, when you had favor, now you got to be a trickster. When you had favor, now you got to lie. When you had favor. Jesus. I said, when you had favor, Jesus, and what used to work in your favor, it ain't, it ain't gonna work now. Until you come to the conclusion that you caused this and you are responsible for this. You were supposed to be in Nineveh. But you went to Joppa. And on your way to Joppa, Jesus, you got on a ship with some other folk and you caused it. See, you've been blaming everybody else about what's going on with you. No, you caused it. <laughs> you the cause. You stop blaming everything on the devil because the devil can't make you do everything. You the cause. The devil is full of suggestions. He can suggest. He can't make you do it. Glory to God. Jesus. So to get your attention, watch this. Until you repent. Until you repent. Because we don't hear that too much in church. We don't hear that word repent. No, what we say, you need to just feel sorry for, for what you did. No, repent. The Bible don't say nothing about feeling sorry. The Bible says repent and turn from your wicked ways. Then would I heal from heaven. Then would I heal your land. Jesus, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Jesus, you got to repent. Quit coming to church and not repenting. Quit sitting up in here underneath this word and not repent. Some of y'all need to open your mouth right now and repent to God. You ain't got to repent to me, but you need to repent to God. God told me to tell you until you repent, you will become the short end of the straw. <laughs> Until you repent, you will become the short end of the straw. I need you to look at someone and say, the devil is a lie. I'm never going to be the short end, Jesus. Come on, come on. So open your mind and say, the devil is a liar. I'm never going to be the short end of nothing. Jesus, you either, listen, either you're going to love me or you're not going to love me. Either you want me or you don't want me. I'm not going to be the short end of nothing. Y'all better hear what I'm preaching. Either he loves you or he don't love you. Either he wants you or he don't want you. Either she loves you or she don't love you. Either she wants you or she don't want you. You cannot be the short end of nothing. Look at me, neighbor. I can never be. The short end of nothing. Point your finger at your neighbor. Someone across the room said, neighbor, you can never be the short end of nothing. Because nothing from nothing will leave you. I said nothing from nothing will leave you 
Someone shout nothing, 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 nothing. I'm not the shorty. And I'm not the deity. Say, say, I'm not the shorty. And I'm not the deity. Say it again, say, I'm not the shorty. And I'm not the deity. And so the Bible test says that they threw Jonah overboard. They threw him overboard because they said, you the one. You caused this. You the reason why we've been traveling on this sea for years. We ain't never had a storm. But then you get on a ship with us. Now there's a raging sea. They looked at Jonah and said, you the one. See, some of y'all are afraid to go to full say, you know what? You the one. You've been the one all along. Stabbing me in my back. Talking about me behind my back. You the one been smiling in my face and had a whole nother agenda. You the one. See, some of y'all afraid to go look at folks say, you the one. I said, some of y'all afraid to look at folks say, you the one. I double the dare you. Someone shout, say, you the one. Come on, someone shout, say, you the one. So the Bible said, they look at Jonah and say, you the one. They picks him up. Throw him overboard. <laughs> and I don't know who I'm talking to. But to get your attention, God said he's going to allow your friends to throw you overboard. It's going to be somebody that you thought that you never would have thought. They're going to throw you overboard. Because you're trying to fit in where you don't even fit in. In fact, you're on the wrong ship, bro. You on, I say you're on the wrong ship. You're in the wrong boat. <laughs> you in the wrong boat. Okay? You in the wrong car. You in the wrong house. Uh-oh. You in the wrong bed. Jesus. Uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to say it again. I'm gonna, I said, you in the wrong bed. Jesus, you in the wrong bed, man. You in the, you, you, you in the, red, you in the wrong bed. The Bible said marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. You in the wrong bed. 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 Oh, you letting the wrong people in your bed. I said, oh, you letting the wrong people in your bed. Sleeping with the enemy. Sleeping with the enemy. Jesus. And God is going to cause your friends to throw you overboard. You've been running toward Tasha's with friends trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. and, and your so-called friends, so-called friends, is going to get you in hot water. I said it gonna, it's, it's, it's going to get you in hot water. It's going to get you in hot water. To, to, to get your attention, God is going to allow the, the thing you've been comfortable sitting in to break into pieces. Did you hear me? The Bible, the, the Bible says they was in that boat. And because the, 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 the sea was so raging that, that, that the boat was about to break into pieces. God is going to allow Jesus. God is going to allow the things you've been comfortable in to break into pieces. Because you're so comfortable in it. In fact, you have no conviction. You don't have no conviction. Because it's too good. You love it. So you don't have no conviction. God said, I'm about to allow what you in to break into pieces. 
Jesus, Jesus, oh my God. That side piece and that late night snack is about to break into pieces. Yeah, that opening up the window, letting them in at night while your kids sleep in the other room, we're going to break into pieces. You opening up the front door real quiet to let them in, is, that's going to break into pieces. I don't know who I'm talking to. God said, I'm about to allow that to break into pieces. Whatever you are comfortable sitting in, sitting in that place of sin, whatever, and we don't hear that word enough either, sin, that, 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 that sinful place you are sitting in, God is about to allow it to break into pieces. I just, I just heard the word syphilis. Glory to God. I just heard the word gonorrhea. I just heard Jesus. It's getting ready to break into pieces. 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 And I prophesy. I prophesy. And I ain't scared. I'm prophesying. By next week, you're going to fall overboard. By next week, it's going to break into pieces. And you're going to say, oh, my God, my, my man of God told me I should have walked away from it when I had a chance. It's going to break into pieces. I said by next week. Watch this. It won't feel the same. <laughs> it won't taste the same. It won't look the same. And it ain't going to smell the same. Let me say that again. <laughs> it ain't going to feel the same. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it ain't going to taste the same. It ain't going to even look the same. It ain't going to even smell the same. It's going to have a whole different aroma. It won't even smell the same. You're going to be saying, why did I stay in this this long? It don't even, it don't even smell right. Jesus, it don't, it don't even smell. Don't even look the same. I, I, Jesus. I need you to turn around and look at somebody and say, oops. Come on, turn around and look at somebody and say, oops. Man overboard. <laughs> I said, look at somebody and say, oops. Man overboard. Jesus, man overboard. Uh, Jesus. You turn around and look at your name and say, neighbor. Man overboard, man, man overboard. And they're going to look the same, they ain't going to smell the same, but they ain't going to even taste the same. Jesus, Jesus. In chapter 2, I'm closing right here. In chapter 2, Jonah had a bad response to correction. Like some people that are listening to me now, you're going to have a bad response to correction today. <laughs> You're going to have a bad response to correction. But the Bible says, but when Jonah prayed to God, get this, I want you to miss this, out of the fish's belly, God then speaks to the fish, and the, and the fish vomited Jonah on dry land. But Jonah had to pray first. Watch this. He didn't pray when he got out of the belly of the fish, the belly of the fish. He prayed while he was in the belly. See, you got to pray while you're in that thing. God, help me get out of this. God, help me to get to leave this alone. Jesus, he prayed while he was in the belly of the fish. And then God speaks to the fish like God's going to speak to your situation. God is about to speak to your situation and get you out of that. Jesus. And God told me to tell you he will speak to your situation when you respond to correction. But he ain't saying nothing to your situation until you respond to correction. Please hear me. 
what has you in a bind is not going to change until you respond to correction. And you're listening to me knowing you are living incorrect, living improper, and living inappropriate. And you want God to change something that change something that you won't leave alone. I said, you want God to change something that you won't leave alone. And like Jonah, you are in a pickle having a bad response to correction. I need you to look at your neighbors and neighbors and say, are you ready to respond? Now in chapter 3, this is where we find the turnaround. Because Joppa was a dead end and his assignment was in Nineveh. Please hear me. You can't make a U-turn until you realize you have come to a dead end. And, un and until you realize that there is an exit from that situation, you will sit at a dead end. Until you come to yourself, you will live at a dead end. You know the story about the prodigal son. You know what he did. He spent all he had. But when he came to himself, he said, you know, I was better off in my father's house. But he had to come to himself. And I don't know why you live in that mess anyway when it's a dead end. And I don't know why you keep talking or uh, taking that abuse when it's a dead end. And until you turn around for good, you will sit at or sit in that dead end. I need you to look at someone and say, neighbor, it's turning around for good. It's turning around for good. It's turning around. And so watch this. The Bible says the word came to Jonah the second time. Saying, arise, go to Nineveh and preach what I told you to preach. So Jonah gets another chance, gets up, makes a U-turn to Nineveh, and then one day he makes a three-day journey. In one day, he did it in three days. In, 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 he did it in one day. Three-day journey, he did it in one day. And he obeys God. He obeys God. Preached to Nineveh. Watch this. He preaches to Nineveh, and the people believed God, proclaimed the fast, and put on sackcloth and ashes. Because Jonah did a U-turn, obey God, he caused a whole city to repent. And what God said he would do, he did it not. Because he was going to destroy Nineveh. But he sent a man of God, he sent a prophet like God sending me to your city, to your house. And God told me to tell you, when you make this U-turn, is going to cause who's connected to you to change. As the people in Nineveh, in Nineveh, they changed. They repented. Whoever you're connected to, I need you to shout real loud. Say, my close connections are changing. Say it. My close connections, connections are changing because I made a U-turn. And then I obeyed God. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but somebody's about to get another chance. God is about to turn that thing around for good. And like Jonah, it's not, not going to take three years. God said you would do it this year. It's going to turn around this year. Someone shout, it's going to turn around this year. And what you believe God for is turning around for good. God told me to tell you to get ready for a complete turnaround. Stand on your feet, everybody. Get ready for a complete turnaround. Some of you have been at a 180 degree opposite your place of turnaround. And God told me to tell you today, I don't know who I'm talking to and who's watching me on the live stream and who will watch it later, that he is the God of the 360 degrees. And the power of the 360 just hit your life. Here it is. 
A 180 is like this. This is a 180. But this is a 360. God said, that's who I am. I'm not the God of the 180. I'm the God of the, of the 360. Turning around. That means what God does, he don't do it halfway. If God says he's going to do it, he'll do it all the way. I need everybody to follow me. Because I got to get you out of this 180 position, Jesus. I, 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 I got to get you out of the 180 and get you into the 360. I need everybody to follow me. You ready? You're going to your right. Turn. 180, 180, stop at 180, turn, 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 stop, stop right there. God do not want you here. I don't know how you got here, but God don't want you there. He don't want you here. He don't want you at the 180. Ready, turn, turn. Tell me, where did you end up at? That's a 360. That is a complete turnaround. God said, that's what I want to do in your life. He's a God of the 360. And God wants to turn your life 